Hi guys, George here again at Optics Warehouse. And today, just thought I'd do, because the nights are starting to draw in and we're gonna get into night vision season proper as it were, I thought I'd do just a quick rundown on IR illuminators. Not plugging any product in particular, just going through some general advice to help you guys decide what would work best for you. So as you can see, I've got a, a few IRs here in front of us. Um, when choosing your IRs, there's two major specs that you need to look at initially, thus, that is. Um, first one being the wavelength of the IR. Typically, most IRs that are supplied with the unit or available to purchase are 850 nm. Well, it's just the wavelength of the light that's being emitted. You will also see 940, a higher wavelength. In practical terms, what this means is 850 is brightest and it will go the furthest as the furthest throw on the beam. But 940 is dimmer and less detectable. So I'm gonna do something now to try and help demonstrate this. So this here is the Wolf IR, just the basic one, the 50 mil. I'm gonna pop a battery in it, and this is an 850. So what I'm gonna do is, if he, he says if he can thread the cap on. Now I do not recommend you do this yourselves. Full disclaimer, shining an IR torch in your eye is a really dumb idea. I know that from experience. I'm pretty sure I've actually damaged my vision doing it. I'm gonna shine this into the camera to try and give you an idea of what it looks like. So I'm gonna turn that on, just looking at the side. So if I shine that there at the camera, you should see it might come through purple on the screen, but there's a glow being emitted from the torch maybe just a little red one in the lens. What that is, that we can see it, an animal's gonna see it, whether that's fox, rats, rabbits, whatever it is. This can give away your position. So when you're looking down range, you see them looking at you, as well as all the other things that could be giving you away, this could be one of them. And so if I take that out now, now I'm gonna put in well, I'm going to put that battery into the 940 version of the same scope, of uh, same torch. So, torch is the exact same. They're going to have the same beam, same throw, all of that good stuff. But this has got a 940 LED pip on there. Don't you just see? Yep, yeah, that's coming through now. The emission from this is far dimmer, and so gives away your position far less. What that means is you're less detectable. It may limit your range, and so there is a trade-off there, as there is with all things, but might mean a more effective nighttime session when you're out, especially doing closer range stuff, ratting, rabbiting, that sort of stuff, where you are so close. So that's the difference between 940 and 850. Now, other things to consider when you're selecting your IR illuminator, the distance you actually want to be able to see out to. So this is Hick Micro's offering. This is what they used to supply with the Alpex and they'll offer it separately. Basic 850 illuminator. This will easily get you to 200 yards. So for some mid-range foxing and general use, a really good option to like compact. Features to look for on IRs or to consider. The main one that pretty much every torch has, you'll be able to pull that lens in and out and that takes you from flood to spot. When you're initially setting up your scope, I always recommend fit it to your, get your scope up, looking through, when you've got your IR there, bring that beam in and out just until it fills the uh, field of view that you're looking through. Basically, most of these torches have a wider beam than your field of view. So narrowing it down to just your field of view concentrates that beam just that little bit more 
and then means that you're going to get a brighter image whether that and that's the same across pretty much most torches now if you're really struggling to set them up a good tip i tell most people is concentrate the beam until it's fully on spot as tight as that beam will go and then with your mount position it so that the beam is in the center of your image and then you can back the back it out to flood again and you know you're getting the center of the beam the most powerful part of that beam centrally where you're looking so other things to consider with torches is the <coughs> sorry excuse me hick micro one's pretty well thought out the on switch is this twist bar here essentially it's a dimmer switch what that allows you to do as well as having the beam that's adjustable is tune it to your image so if you're or tune it to your distance rather so if you're coming in close you can keep it dimmer prolonging your battery life things like that and if you go out further you can crank it up now if you are shooting say you're just air gunning maybe some close work with rimfire things like the wolf which are obviously a bit cheaper are more than adequate a hundred meter beam maybe just a bit over is going to cover most bases for the vast majority of people unless like i say you're doing the much further distance work involved maybe some foxing all right so i'm just going to mention some other features that are available on other torches so this is the wolf shadow lux the big thing with this is that it's a with this switch here you can see w 850 940 it's a three in one so you can switch between on the fly what you want and then it's also got rat tails and things like that in there to help so it's just a general overview of this video to give you some advice a quick mention about v-cell lasers so v-cell lasers we don't sell any they're a bit of a as far as i'm aware a gray other gray area whether they are legal to sell um, the fact of the matter is they do perform well they chuck a very concentrated beam really far and so really improve your nighttime performance but as i say because they're a restricted item or can be a restricted item I, this is it there is no definite thing saying they're illegal or legal basically there's a burn risk with them and any of you who have used more powerful irs will know when you've got that turned on the emitter gets hot and if you have that concentrated light a bit like you know when you see the demented kids burning uh, ants with a uh, magnifying glass same sort of principle but with a much more powerful concentrated beam of ir light and so there is fire risks and that's why they can be restricted um, but then i hope this has been helpful if you need any more questions please reach out to us and we'll get you sorted cheers now bye bye oh, that's great. Other, other